anytime you can sit up in church with a nasty attitude and a nasty disposition and you don't ever get convicted, then the power of God in the house ain't genuine. Because when I read my Bible, anytime the power of God showed up, people had to change. Even when they didn't want to change, they had to change. All right, no, 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 no. I'll I, I show you something. I'm going to show you something before I go on. How many of y'all believe that speaking in tongues is right? Lift your hand. Let me see your hand. Okay. Uh, how many folk in here were raised apostolic? Let me see your hand. Raise apostolic. Okay. Give you a little brief doctrinal lesson on the apostolic faith. We were raised apostolic all our lives, and this is what we believe. We believe that speaking in tongues was an outward expression. That the Holy Spirit has come into a man's human spirit. We believe speaking in tongues was a sign that you were being regenerated. Reconciled to God. Because of the efficacious sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We believe because he is the propitiative of all of our sins, we have a right to the tree of life. That's what we believe. But I'm finding out, uh, Bishop, that tongues cannot be the Holy Ghost. Because some of the meanest folk I know speak in tongues. I ain't got no help in here now. All right. Oh, no, 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 no. You smart. You know a lot of Bible. Let me challenge your theology. Where in the ham and cheese have you ever read where it says, by this shall all men know you are my disciples because you spoke in a tongue? Where does it say a tree is known by the tongues it speaks in? Uh-uh. It says a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. By this shall all men know you are my disciple, that you got love one to another. So that means you can speak in tongues until liquid gold comes out your mouth. But if you don't have no love, you're a sounding brass and a tickling cymbal. I'm going really, I'm, I'm to really get in trouble in here now. Now, love for us is always attached to title. Love to us is always attached to the seat in the front of the church. The bigger the title, the more legitimacy you feel you have in the economy of God. But I challenge you tonight and say that titles only validate your bastardized mentality. Lord, I better not use that language in here tonight. Yes, sir, but I'm going to say it again. Some of y'all are bastards that don't understand your value because bastards don't like correction. Bastards need positions in order to come to church and see we got it so twisted and so mixed up that we don't understand that a title does not validate your spirituality. It endorses your spiritual ignorance. You ain't read nowhere, you ain't seen nowhere in modern Christianity with mainstream Pentecostals where titles were important. You ain't never heard of no prophetess Joyce Myers. You ain't never heard of no Bishop Billy Graham. You ain't never heard of no prophet Al Roberts. You ain't never heard of it. You ain't never heard of it. You ain't never heard of it. Because they understand that when Abraham was told by God, leave Ur of the Chaldeans, he said, go to a land that I show you and I will make your name great. Not your title. Uh oh, y'all, y'all missed it. See, you want your title to make you great. He said, I'll make your name great. I'll make your enemies even at peace with you. I'll make your enemies take care of you because your name is great. All right, to prove to you that names are more important than titles. Paul is talking one day and he says, uh, Jesus I know. And Apollos I know. But who are you? See, some of y'all would rather be more popular with people than popular with demons. 
you're going to get that around midnight. I would rather be popular with demons that when I walk in a room, demons say, uh-oh, here we come. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. I would rather walk in a room and demons say, I got to take my hands off his children, his hands off his family because his name is great. <laughs> 